Okay, so today we're going to just go over real quick the basics on how to build an edge-to-edge -edge quilt project in Qmatic. So I have opened my Qmatic, I have gone to File, New Project, and it populates my project in here. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to go to Full View, which is on the top right, it looks like an eyeball. I click Full View and I can see my whole quilt here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to go over here and put in my quilt size. So it defaults to 60 by 60. Let's just say my quilt is 65 by 72, and I'm just using my keyboard. You can also use the keypad on the screen. Okay, green check mark is always going to save whatever we altered. So green check mark, and now it populated. And again, I'm going to go back to full view so I can see the whole project. So let's just see, over here is my design center. So I've got some designs put in here and I haven't played with this one yet, this Susie Quilts Boho. Um, this is a design I bought from So Shabby Quilting. And so it um, pulled over here. So if I want to bring it over, I double tap the design and it will drop it over into my space here, okay? Red means you can manipulate it. So I've got two here, I don't need both of them. So I click on one. Again, red means I can man manipulate it and I'm gonna get rid of one, okay? So I'm gonna click on the design I wanna use. Now from here, uh, down here it's showing me my design is 9.8 inches wide by 8.95 inches tall. Now if I want to adjust that, I can use my resize icon down here at the bottom. I can adjust it on the screen. I can adjust it with the sew head. Um, I don't use that option hardly ever, but if you for some reason wanted to use the sew head to like match the size of the block or something, you could. Um, I'm actually just playing with this before I've set my save area or anything, so we're not gonna do that one today. Or I can use the keypad. So let's say I happen to know that I want my design to be 12 inches tall. Then I can just click into my size box here, put in 12 inches, hit OK, and it will show me the resize. Now, if I'm happy with that, I can click the green check mark. If I don't, if I don't want to save my changes, I can hit the red box. But we're going to green check mark because we like that. And now you can zoom in. So I've got my mouse hooked up and I'm just scrolling. You can see green is the start point, red is the end point. Okay. So we're going to build this as an edge to edge. Now you can scroll in and out here, as you can see. If I want to go back to seeing the whole quilt, I always just go click full view. So I like to move my design up to the top because for edge to edge, I like the design to go off the edges. And we're going to use our edge to edge more button here and we're going to build the design all the way across. Now some designs, depending on the way that they are, are built or designed by whoever designed the pantograph, um, you're going to have to do some offsetting. So we'll see if this one needs any offsetting. If you need offsetting, then it's always helpful to add an extra uh, repeat and that way you have some room to work with. So once we've got our row here, we're going to go over here and use our um, multiply feature and we're going to build the pattern down. So I've got across, I've got down, we're going to use down. And this one looks like it'll nest just fine without any offsetting. So what I like to do is, so it'll just populate it in here. I like to get my spacing with the first two rows. So I'm going to move this up and I'm going to put it where I like it. And I think I like it a little closer. So now once I've got that spacing all set and I continue to add rows, it will automatically put it in the same spacing. Okay. So I'm going to build it down. I'm going to add an extra one here. We may or may not need it. Right, we know that sometimes things shift and move around as we quilt. So I'm gonna, I always add extra because it's easier to trim it away or get rid of it than to add it later. So once I'm happy with this, again, green check mark is going to save my project or save my, save my design. And then I'm gonna move it around and see. I don't like to have, like I don't want, I don't want gaps here, right? So I'm gonna move this up, and I like to kind of start on a partial maybe in the middle of the row or somewhere where I'm not gonna have any huge gaps there, okay? I kinda also sometimes look at the bottom. I'm less concerned with that at this point, but. So I have this all set up here, like I like this. And now I have my design built. And this would be the point where I would set my safe area and then 
start setting up to quilt. So we have built our quilt into Qmatic, set up our design, and now we're ready to set our safe area and kind of prepare for quilting. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to actually move that up just a little. There we go. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to set the safe area. So I'm going to set the safe area here and it's going to tell me to move the sew head to the top left corner. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take our sew head over. So this is important. You need to make sure your belts are locked on. So my belts are locked on. You can see I'm just walking the quilt, or I'm just walking the sew head over. So I'm going to go to the top left corner. The other thing that's important here is you want to build, put your safe area a little wider. Um, and I'll get some close-ups of what I mean of that so you can see it. So once I've set it, now you can see my red safe area box is expanding, okay? And I'm going to come set the bottom right corner and hit set, okay? So once I've set that, I now have my safe area. I know where it's safe for me to work. Now the next thing that I like to do is I like to tell the computer where I'm at. You can see right now my crosshair is over here. Well, if I'm starting a new quilt, I want to tell it where my top corner is. So I'm going to move my sew head to the top corner, and let's just say that's my top corner. Um, and so I'm going to tell it, and in theory, it'll be relatively close. There we go. I'm kind of playing with this so this design doesn't exactly match the size of the quilt, but that's okay. So right now you can see my crosshairs here. So I put my sew head at this corner of the actual quilt. So I'm going to use my realign safe area button. We're going to click that. I'm going to choose snap to point. Now it's important that you choose this before you go try and click the point. Snap to point. Click the point where you put the sew head. So I'm just scrolling in. I put the sew head right here. So I've got a red dot now. And then I'm going to hit the green check mark. And you can see now the crosshair has moved to that point. Now I'm going to go back to full view. Okay, so right now I've got this safe area right at the edge of my quilt. So I don't have enough room, which means that I've got my quilt top too far up, too close to the edge of my safe area. So what I can do is I'm just going to adjust the position of my quilt. So I'm basically just moving it down a little and then I can do that process again, okay? Because ideally we want room up here so we have room to trim and we're not getting too close to the edge of our safe area. So I'm gonna go choose realign, safe area, snap to point, and we're going to tell it again where we're at. So I'm just choosing that corner, green check mark. Now, there we go. Now you can see I have room Right, this this box is my quilt. The other red box is my safe area. So now I'm ready to actually set this up to stitch those those first few rows. Now, I like to trim as I go. I just find that it's um, in case you know things shift or quilts aren't perfectly square, you can adjust that as you go. So the first thing I need to do is I need to separate all these rows because right now everything is lumped together and it's not going to let me quilt that. So down here, we have our unconnect button. Now, again, if it was blue, then nothing's gonna work here, right? So you need to make sure it's red. If it's red, it's selected and we can alter it. So I'm gonna go over here and choose unconnect. Turn to blue, but now, see, I can click individual rows here, okay? So this is what's important here. So if I scroll in, you can tell that the bottom edge of this row is outside my save area, which means it's not gonna let me quilt that. So I could, if I wanted to readjust things to fit the whole, the, you know, the first and second rows in one pass, or what I can do is just understand that I maybe have to quilt this one row at a time. So that's something else to kind of think about. And you can see down here that I set my row height at 12 inches. So even though I have a 24 inch sew head, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be able to quilt the 24 inch design, right? Um, I tend to limit 
myself to about between 16 and 18, depending on the makeup of the quilt. But let's just say we're going to just accept that we can only quilt one row at a time, and that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and trim down this top row so I can get ready to quilt. I move the sew head where I'm comfortable trimming, and then I'm going to trim this row down, right? You can only quilt what's inside of our safe area. So we're going to use our trim icon. We're going to trim the horizontal edge first, so I'm going to click here. Now, anything that's black gets trimmed away. So if I trim that, I can hit preview. Oops, I trimmed the wrong, that was the wrong edge, right? So I can just close out of this. We're going to go back in here, trim. I'm going to trim on the horizontal, and now I want to invert that so it trims outside, which is what I want. And then I can hit the green check mark. Now I'm going to go and trim the sides. So I'm going to do vertical, and then I'm trimming the selected design because I'm only trimming what I'm going to actually run this time. Okay, so you can move the sew head and kind of figure out right where you're at if you need to trim here. You can trim on the vertical, which is just a straight line, and it'll trim away the black. If for some reason your quilt's not perfectly square, you can trim on an angle, and it will let you choose a start point. So let's say that my quilt is a little bit wider at the top and then comes down, right, comes in. So there's my, I set my start point, click end point, and now I can set it over here. So if, like I said, if for some reason your quilt comes in, now on this side, I do want to invert that because we want to trim out here. And then I can hit the green check mark and it will have trimmed that on an angle, okay? And then I can do the same to the other side. We'll just use vertical because this side worked out better than the other, I guess. And again, we want to invert that to trim out here and green check mark. And now I'm ready to stitch this. So my process for doing this, so we can go and hit play. So there's a couple different ways. It's telling me there are cute designs outside the safe area, DQ and proceed. If I hit yes, it will give me this option. So basically it went and DQ'd the rest of this here. The green is what it's gonna stitch and it's letting me choose, do I wanna start at the start point or at the closest point on design? If you're starting a new row, you wanna start at the start point. We'll um, do some other videos where I show you how to use this closest point on design, but we'll hit at start point and then the sew head will move to its start point and you'll be ready to stitch. So we'll just let it think for a second and then it will move over to where it needs to start and you can see the crosshair is moving so it's just going up and when it gets to the start point I can go ahead and start it I'm not actually stitching this on this particular quilt that I have loaded on this frame but um, you'll get the gist here of how that works and so once it gets over to this green circle which is the start point then it will prompt me to tie on and start. So here's my tie on prompt at the sew head. I can tie on and then I can actually start cumatic from the sew head.